Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to go over duopolistic competition. If you've never heard of the word duopoly, that's just a situation where there are two firms that are producing the same good and only two firms in the world, in contrast to a monopoly, perhaps, where there's just one firm producing that good. Now, I've been working with a lot of MBA students recently, and I've encountered this sort of game in my, in my process of doing that, and I think this is a really neat, uh, neat application of iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. So if you want to get in some practice with iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies, this is a good game to go to. Uh, I've also updated my game theory textbook, Game Theory 101, the complete textbook, to include this sort of information. You can find it on Amazon for $3.99. Links are below the video in the information. This information is also covered in just the first chapter of the textbook, which is for sale by itself for 99 cents. You can download that instead if that's what you're looking for. Either way, let's get to this game here. So here's the setup. There are two identical firms, and they're selling the same good. There's going to be a simultaneous production decision. So at the same time, both of these firms are going to produce some quantity of the good that they're going to be selling on the market. But there are some simple supply and demand economics at work here, so there's a market demand function. The more that the firms produce collectively, the less that the goods are going to sell for, which means they're going to be bringing in less revenue per item sold the more is produced. And specifically, the market demand function that I've given you there is that the price is going to be equal to 12 minus 2Q. So if each of the firms produces one good, the Q here is going to equal 2. There's a total of 2 produced. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. And so if you work through the market demand function, you get a price of, equal, of being equal to 12 minus 2 times 2, or 12 minus 8, or simply, sorry, 12 minus 4, or simply price is equal to 8 here. So in that particular case, price is equal to 8. They would sell those things for $8 a piece. But here on the last bullet point, we have the constant marginal cost of $1 for each firm. So every item a firm produces, it costs them $1 to actually produce that. So if they're both selling one good at $8 a piece, they're only going to be profiting $7 after you subtract for that cost. Now, if you work through a whole bunch of different situations where you could have firm one producing anywhere between zero to five goods and firm two producing anywhere between zero to five goods, you get a payoff matrix that looks like this, where the numbers in there are the total profits for each of the firms, where the, the blue firm is firm one and the red firm is firm two. The reason that I've stopped at five here is that if the firms produce six or more on their own, this is going to drive down that market demand function so that they're no longer to be able to actually profit no matter what because they have to still pay $1 to purchase or to buy or to make each of these goods. But then when they're actually sold on the market, they're going to bring in less than $1 a piece. So it's just not sensible to make more than five. So that's why we've been able to at least narrow our range down to six choices for each player. The problem, of course, is that you still have 36 possible outcomes. And if you look at this game, you might have an instinct to panic at first because 36 outcomes is a whole lot of outcomes to deal with. And you might be wondering, well, how on earth am I actually going to be able to solve this game? But if you're patient, we can run through iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies and go from 36 possible outcomes to just one reasonable outcome. And... To start out, if I can draw your attention to firm one's decision between producing three and four goods. You'll notice here that three strictly dominates for, uh, four for firm one. That is, regardless of the production level player two decides on, firm one is always better off producing three than four. And we can see this because all of firm one's payoffs for three are greater than firm one's payoffs for four. So in other words, this 15 is greater than this 12, this nine is greater than this four, this three is greater than this negative four, this negative three is greater than this negative four, and this negative three is greater than this negative four, and also this negative three is greater than this negative four. So in that light, it really doesn't make sense for firm one to ever produce four. It would always rather produce three. So we can eliminate four from consideration. That's something that firm one would never want to do. And so after you've eliminated that, you are now going from 36 possible outcomes to now 30. But we don't just stop there. We can keep going. We can keep eliminating strategies. Again, I want to draw your attention to firm one's three strategy, but now compare it to firm one's five strategy. And once again, three is always better than five. This 15 is greater than this 5, this 9 is greater than this negative 5, this 3 is greater than this negative 5, this negative 3 is greater than this negative 5. Again, another negative 3 and a negative 5, and a negative 3 and a negative 5. It doesn't make sense for firm 1 to produce 5. Producing 3 is always better for firm 1, so we can eliminate 5 from consideration as well. 
we've gone from 36 strategies now to just, or 36 outcomes to now just 24, and we can keep going. You should be able to, to reason to yourself that the firms are symmetrical. If four and five were a bad idea for firm one, they're also gonna be a bad idea for firm two. And if we look at that, sure enough, that's the case. So now comparing just three and four for firm two, three is always better than four for firm two. This 15 is greater than this 12, nine is greater than four, three is greater than negative four, negative three is greater than negative four. Done deal, player two should never use three. And so you get rid of that, but you can also get rid of five for the same reason as before. So 15 is greater than five, nine is greater than negative five, three is greater than negative five, negative three is greater than negative five. We can eliminate this five strategy from consideration. We are now down to just 16 outcomes when we started with 36. We should keep going though, no sense in stopping. What's next? Well, look at firm one's decision between producing one good and zero goods. If firm one produces zero goods, obviously it's destined to only make zero dollars. If it's not producing anything, it's not gonna be able to sell anything. So that's a net profit of zero. But if it's producing one here, after we've eliminated these other two strategies, because we know that player two will never actually engage in producing four or five, you can see that firm one would always rather produce one good than zero goods because nine is greater than zero, seven is greater than zero, five is greater than zero, and three is greater than zero. So given that firm two's decision to produce four and five is insensible, well now firm one can reason that it's no longer sensible for firm one to produce zero. So we can get rid of that zero. We can do the same thing for player two here, isolating player two's decision between one and zero. One's always better. Seven's greater than zero, five is greater than zero, and three is greater than zero. So we can now remove zero as a strategy for player two, down to just nine possible outcomes. We're making great progress here, but now that we're down to just nine of these outcomes, we can further reduce it by looking at three and two for player or firm one. So now two is always better than three for firm one. 10 is better than nine, six is greater than three, two is greater than negative three. There goes the three from consideration down to six outcomes. Same is gonna be true for firm two. Firm two is always better off producing two than three given that we've eliminated everything else from consideration. So 10 is greater than nine, six is greater than three. So we can eliminate this three column down to just four outcomes. And this is really simple at this point. So if you look at firm one here, uh, firm one is always better off producing 10 or producing two than one because 10 is greater than seven, six is greater than five. So you can get rid of that. And now we're down to just this. And at this point, it's a single optimal decision for firm two. Uh, two is better off producing two than one because six is greater than five. And lo and behold, after quite a bit of work and a lot of breath on my part, we are at a singular solution where both firms produce two goods a piece. And that's a stable outcome. That's a reasonable outcome. And once you go through all of these uh, iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategy sequences, you're good to go. And you know that the only sensible solution here is for both of the firms to produce two goods a piece. So we started a situation where there were 36 outcomes and worked our way down to just one reasonable outcome. And we can do that because as long as we're patient enough and there are strictly dominated strategies in the game, we can eliminate things and come up with the reasonable solution based off of that path of elimination. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you check out the textbook if you're interested. And in any case, I will see you next time. Thanks.